Well, hello, and wherever you're watching from, whether it's at a campus or whether you're online, I'm glad you could join me this morning. I hope that you are ready to be challenged, and I open with the question, how is the fruit in your life? Last week, we evaluated and walked through the idea of unbelief and the fruit that it produces when it's the fruit of the flesh. And then we looked at the truths of God and the, and the roots when we have good, strong roots into the truths of God, the spiritual fruit that it produces. So if you didn't get a chance to watch that, I encourage you, maybe if you're at home or wherever, to pause, go back. But we want to press in. And today we want to look at a different part of the gospel, which is good news for us today. And what I want to press into is this question. Who's the hero of your story? We're going to be evaluating that today. And I've listened to a lot of people share their stories. And sometimes it's just them telling the story of why they are living in the area they live in or how they got to be who they are today. And oftentimes they are the hero of their story. I'm guilty of that too, because it's my story, right? But I want to challenge you today to ask a different question. If you know Jesus, is he the hero of your story? And so if you want to open your Bibles up to John chapter 9, I'm going to be walking through the story. You can kind of follow along as I tell the story, but I want you to listen to the characters in our story today. And it starts with an opening scene, and we have Jesus and his disciples. A little background is it's important to understand of the story is they're out walking, and this is the Sabbath, the Sabbath day of rest. The Jews were told to take a day of rest. And ironically, Jesus, who is God in the flesh, is the one who implemented the very rule that's going to cause problems in our story today. So as the disciples are walking, they come into this town, and there they see a blind man. And the question that the disciples ask is this. They say, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? They ask an important question. Why is he blind? And from their perspective and the cultural perspective, the Jewish perspective, it was because of sin. But Jesus corrects them and he says, no, it's not that at all. In fact, neither he nor his parents sinned. But in fact, this was done. His blindness is on display so that the power of God might be revealed in him and on display. And of course, in our story today, <coughs> we're going to press into not only physical blindness, but we're going to look at spiritual blindness. Where are you blind, perhaps, in your spiritual walk? And this guy in our story, the blind man, he is going to receive something really cool. He's going to get healed. And so Jesus does something on the Sabbath that he wasn't supposed to. He goes to work. And first he spits into the dirt, and then he stirs the dirt to create mud, so he's doing work. And of course, this is going to drive the Pharisees of the time, these religious leaders, it's going to drive them crazy when they find out not only did he just do physical work, but then he spreads it on that man's eyes, and he says, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And of course, he does. So the man goes. And he follows what Jesus said, and he comes out, and sure enough, he can see. What a miracle. And you can imagine the expression on his face. I kind of, I chose this picture because I thought, man, what is it like for this guy? He now can see for the first time in his life, born blind and now can see, given a, a physical healing of sight, but also what we're going to find is there's a spiritual healing happening as well. So the neighbors then in the story, they, they see this guy and they realize he can see. And so they're conf conflicted. Some are saying, well, um, it cla I claim to be, I think it's him. And others are saying, well, it only looks like him. It can't really be him. My first view of that is that they've never really looked at this man. He's probably been that person that they've looked toward, but never looked at. And now the blind man is with vision, and he's looking at them, looking in their eyes, and I imagine the confusion they're feeling. And I wonder in yourself, are there, are there people around you that you don't really see? Maybe they have physical disabilities. Maybe they have a personality that gets in the way of you really connecting with them. But are there people that you see, but you really don't know who they are? You don't really look at them. 
And so here's the neighbors, here's the people in the town, and they're wondering, who is this? And so they ask him, and his response is, no, I am the man. Look at me, it's, it's me. Can you imagine what that's like? He's so excited, and here's people saying, well, I think it's him. I wonder if it's like he's standing there, and they're having this conversation about him in front of him, but not talking to him. Well, I don't know. <laughs> he kind of looks like him. Well, well, I don't know. I think it's him. And he's like, no, no, hey, here I am. Yeah, it's me. It's really me. I can see. What a miracle, a great gift that he's given. And so they ask him the question, so how is this even possible? And this is his response. He says, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. And he told me to go to Siloam and wash. And so I went and I washed and then I could see. It's a simple story. There's this guy, he's named Jesus. And he put mud on my eyes and I washed and I can see. Well, sadly enough, they weren't all too happy with that. Because it wasn't enough. All he could say was, I don't know. I was blind. I don't know. Because they started asking him, so where is Jesus? He goes, I don't know. Like, do you remember I was blind? So some guy put it, his name was Jesus, but I don't know where he is. I walked to the pool. I didn't see him. And so, of course, they're kind of, kind of wondering what's going on. The whole time, are you hearing the story? The blind man is the hero of the blind man's story is Jesus. He doesn't know what he looks like, but there he is. And so they take him, the blind man, and they haul him over to the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the time. And they present him to the, the Pharisees and they ask him, oh, so you've been healed and you can see. How did that happen? And he repeats basically the same thing. There's this guy named Jesus. He put mud on my eyes, told me to go wash, and I can see. But their response is interesting. He says this. Some of the Pharisees said, this man, Jesus, is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. The first thing they say isn't, wow, congratulations, or ooh, where is he? They say, this couldn't even be possible. This guy isn't from God. And he's really challenging, they're challenging this thought. And it's interesting, both the blind man and the Pharisees are looking at the exact same circumstance with two different views. The blind man acknowledges it's Jesus and he healed me. The Pharisees want to redirect and say it couldn't possibly be. It could not be. So they asked him again a very important question. Here's what they said. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. And the man replied, he's a prophet. Very simple. He's from God. That's, that's really what he's saying. I don't know much about him, but there's something unique here. So I'm going to have to say he's a prophet. And of course, the Pharisees get really upset at this moment. Because he's claiming that God sent somebody, but this somebody did work on the Sabbath. He went against the laws of God. How could he possibly do this? And there's, there's confusion happening. Well, the Pharisees, of course, they didn't want to believe this yet, so they thought, I know what we'll do. Let's get his parents in here. So they, they kick the blind man out of the synagogue. They bring the parents in. And I love the response of the parents, because you look at them, there's two things. So what do you have to say, parents? And they look at the Pharisees, they say, well, we know he's our kid. <laughs> All right, that was pretty obvious. And we know he's been blind his whole life. <laughs> and that's as much as they said. And to the last thing, if you want to know about him, go ask him yourself. He's of age, he's old enough. Why do you ask us? And it mentions in there that they're afraid of something. They're afraid they'd be removed from the synagogue. They wouldn't be able to come worship if they acknowledge Jesus as the Messiah. And so they back out. Two things. Yep, he was definitely our child. <laughs> definitely is. And two, he definitely was blind. And now he can see. But why don't you ask him yourself? Why don't you ask him yourself? And of course, all right, fine. Bring him back in. The Pharisees bring him in. And here's their, their statement. Give glory to God. Tell us the truth because we know he's a sinner. 
This guy did something. He worked on the Sabbath day. This can't be of God. We know he's a sinner. Give glory. Tell the truth. Well, they're not very happy at this moment because he just keeps saying this. I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? And I love this, this little sharp jab. Why do you want to hear again? And the question is, do you want to become his disciples too? All I can think of is here is this blind, formerly blind man who now can see with a smile on his face, who's grinning ear to ear because he's received not only physical healing, but he is aware of Jesus. And he's like, I, I don't know what else to tell you. I was blind. I can see. It was Jesus. Do you want to be his disciple too? There's a lot wrapped in that statement I think is important because I think what has happened is he's immediately acknowledging who Jesus is and is identifying himself as a disciple. Well, that just infuriates the Pharisees even more. They say, well, we're, we're disciples of Moses. This guy here, I don't know who Jesus is. So, you know, puff up the chest. Moses was who we follow. And they're challenged by this question. Well, here's the thing. He says, I don't know what to tell you. I don't even know where this guy comes from. But one thing I do know, I was blind and now I see. I was blind and now I see. And they go on and they say, well, we don't even know where he comes from. He says, well, isn't that remarkable? You guys who are supposed to be all knowledgeable about who God is, you don't know where he's come from. If he's not from God, he says, the blind man says, he could not heal. He could not perform these miracles. He could do nothing. And they end with this statement. You are steeped in sin. How dare you lecture us? And they kick him out. There's this moment in the story that I think we often um, give the Pharisees a hard time. And I don't want us to leave with this idea that, that they were just mean people. They were truly trying to live up to God's standards. And in that whole idea of the Sabbath, they wanted to honor God so much that what God said was rest. And then they added hundreds of rules on top of that to make sure people would rest to honor God. And so, so I understand they're struggling and they're humanists. They need to understand who Jesus is. But the, the, the man goes out, and then this cool thing happens. Jesus confronts the formerly blind man. And he's like, hey, who, uh, who healed you? And he goes, well, it's this guy, Jesus. And he says, but I don't know where he is. He goes, I'm just telling you, it's me. Here I am. And the response is this. The man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. So not only do we see a, a blind man receive physical healing in his vision, but we see a blind man who spiritually comes to a new truth and he worships as a response. He knows who Jesus is far above and beyond just some crazy miracle that happened. He acknowledges his Lord and he worships him. So what's your story it's a, it's a question that I think if you're a believer here today, I want to challenge you in this next part to really evaluate your story and begin to craft your story so that Jesus is the hero. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're not a believer yet, I hope that you'll listen and continue to evaluate where are you then in the story that perhaps Jesus is working in your life, even though you haven't acknowledged it. Let's take a look at those a couple, couple ways. First of all, I want to come to the first question or statement basically is that without Jesus, I am blind. We spent the opening of the gospel series on an idea of unbelief. Basically, unbelief is blindness. Even if I'm a follower of Jesus, there are areas where I find myself blind to the truth or not believing it. But here's where it kind of plays out. I want you to think about the story here. See, sin has blinded me to many things. And maybe you're still in this place. Maybe sin is blinding you to your identity. 
Maybe the identity you've been holding on to is, I'm abused, I'm not valuable, I'm useless, I'm not smart enough, whatever it is that your identity is wrapped around something that is not truth. That sin is blinding you to that. I want you to look at the characters in our story for a moment. I want you to think about this. The parents, what's their identity? Their identity is they live in the shadow of sin, perhaps, that caused their child to be blind. So their identity is sinners. And that because of that, their child was blind. That culture is probably what they lived under. And then we have the Pharisees, of course, who look at the blind man. They're going the same, same direction. Well, you, you obviously have sin in your life or your parents, so therefore you're really useless. It's sin that's caused your problem. You're steeped in it. That was their closing statement. Then, of course, you have the disciples asking the same question, <laughs> who sinned? The identity is wrapped around his sin again. But then there's Jesus. And he says, no, 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 no. The identity is this so that God may be on display. So the purpose of this healing, the purpose for this man's blindness was to put God on display. Where have you perhaps struggled in your purpose, in your story? Before you knew Jesus, if that's something that's true to you, that you now know Jesus, before you knew Jesus, where were you blind to your purpose? Did you perhaps think your purpose was just to work or maybe to keep peace between people or in your family or, or maybe honestly just to make it day to day was my only purpose? And what about truth? It's a funny word to say, here's the truth I believed when the truth is a lie. But what did you think was truth? That was a distraction. There is no God, perhaps. I was just created by an accident. Or, I'm good enough and God will just love me no matter what. I'm good enough, it's fine. The, the end, whatever it looks like at the end of my life, God is, is gracious to me and I'm good enough, it's fine. What was maybe the, the blindness that's happened in your life? It's important because the second statement is now, because of Jesus, now I see. You see, Jesus reveals and heals and brings truth back into our vision. In the story, he forms mud, right? Spits in the dirt and makes mud. I bet that was an interesting experience for people watching. <laughs> and he puts it on the guy's eyes. But see, the man had to do something. This man had to do the same thing you or I have to do. He had to be willing to surrender to Jesus' plan. Go wash. Not just any place, go there. Go to the pool of Siloam, wash. Jesus asks us the same thing, but he says in Romans, he makes it very simple. He says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. We come to that same place. If I want sight, I have to do something. I have to surrender. I have to acknowledge, I have to admit, I have to be willing to follow the path that Jesus has presented. So what, what does it look like without Jesus? See, because every solution without Jesus will fall short. A couple weeks ago, I talked about the idea of false gospels. There's lots of gospel ideas out there that even include Jesus, but they reject a lot of the truth about Jesus, and they all lead to one main idea. If I work hard enough, then I will be set free. I will be healed. I will be something. And that's not what Jesus says. He says, you have to put faith in me. Other solutions that we rest, wrestle with are success. If I have enough success or religious duties, if I perform enough religious duties or follow enough of the, if I attend church faithfully every single weekend and then give money, then that's enough. And Jesus says, no, it's me. So where is Jesus in your story? What was it like for you when Jesus uh, came into your view and removed the blindness of your life? That's part of your story. A lot of times I listen to people share their story of Jesus, and this is kind of what it sounds like. There was me, 
all kinds of sin. And then there was Jesus, and I said a prayer. And then there's me again, working hard to prove that I love Jesus. Where's Jesus in the story? Sounds a lot like me, with a little Jesus sprinkled on. Is, is Jesus the hero of your story? And it brings me to my last point. Now that I have Jesus, a Jesus story, now I have one, sorry. Now I have a Jesus story. The fact is, when I'm blind, the Jesus story is happening, but I don't see it. <laughs> and then he invades my life. He perhaps, he makes himself available to me. I begin to, to press in and seek as he seeks me. And I say, yes. But now I have a story, and this is the best part about the gospel. It's good news for today, because my gospel story didn't stop the moment I said yes to Jesus. It continues to develop. It continues to be enhanced. And so I want to give you just right now, take your pens out, take some notes. I want to give you some simple thoughts to help you think through your story. And I want to lower the bar. First one is this, keep Jesus the hero. Before I knew Jesus, I know Jesus was active in my life. Looking back, I look at the time in my youth when I was running far from God, and there he was. Why did he protect me from some of the things I could have hurt myself with? I don't know, <laughs> except to share this today, I guess. But I saw him there. I saw him working and I saw him extending grace and forgiveness even when I didn't think I deserved it. And then the next part is I don't have to know everything. This is the critical piece. Oftentimes we talk to people who finally surrender to Jesus and then we ask the question, okay, do you want to go talk about it with other people? And they say, someday, as soon as I know enough, as soon as I've memorized from cover to cover, okay, good luck. Or as soon as I understand all of Scripture, another good luck. <laughs> How much did the blind man know? I was blind, and now I see. And his name is Jesus. Do you want to be his disciple too? <laughs> That's pretty simple. I think we've overcomplicated this because the story of God working in you is the story of his power on display in your life. So you don't have to know everything there is, but you do have to know that his name is Jesus. And he was with you before, and he, and he called you, and you responded, and he's working today. The second is this, all stories go from darkness to light when Jesus is involved. We're talking about a gospel moment in people's lives when they surrender and they're no longer children of darkness. They're called the children of light, the children of God. You're, you're adopted into the family. All those stories are beautiful and powerful. Don't diminish your story because of your circumstances. Don't diminish it. Oh, I, I don't know. I just, I grew up in a Christian home and my parents, they, they introduced me to Jesus when I was like two. And I think I just, I guess I followed Jesus all my life. And now I'm here today to, to share my testimony. No, here's the fact. Even if you were raised in a Christian home, you still had to come to truth. You still had to surrender. You still had to follow the path of Jesus. Regardless, you were in darkness and you were brought to light. That is good news for today and tomorrow and the next day. And if you have a story that involves a whole lot of distance from God, perhaps, hatred of God, anger toward God, maybe even you are the head of the satanic temple of wherever you came from, that story is equally powerful because you were moved from darkness to light. Don't diminish how dark your darkness was. Instead, look at where Jesus was in the darkness. He was there. Last one I want to tell you about is just to be authentic. Just be you. You don't have to have some special thing memorized or whatever. Get God's word in your heart. <laughs> know it. But you don't have to have some, this is about your story. But it's not your story. This is the beauty. We worry about if I don't tell the story right, then somebody won't respond the way I hope they will respond. We take all the responsibility in my ability to tell a story and bring someone into the light. Uh-uh. If that was your story, that'd be true. 
But I want you to get a different perspective. Jesus is the hero of your story. Tell the story so that Jesus is the hero. When I was a kid and I stole and I got caught, this is my story, the shop owner said, I forgive you. You're a good, you have a good boy there, they said to my mom. That was Jesus working. I was far from God. When I was in the moment where I came in and I knelt in my living room because I thought I was losing my first son, and I surrendered my life to Christ, Jesus was there. And he was the one who was walking me through the emotions of that moment. And today, as I preach with you today and share this good news for today, Jesus is here. And he's the one who is the author of my life and the one who is moving me forward and helping to shape me to be more like him and to share the story, his story. Look what it said at the beginning and we'll bring it to a close. This happened, referring to the blind man, referring to you and me. Your life is on display so that the works of God might be displayed in you. The blind man was blind so the God's power would be on display in him for that moment. You are here today, perhaps, because you've come to faith in Jesus and your life matters. You are on display of God's work in your life today. Share your story. Share it well. Make Jesus the hero. Your story matters. I'm going to release to our campuses. I love you guys. I hope that you uh, walk away challenged today.